My name is Influencer Rhapsody, and welcome back to Slayer's Fire. All right, time to play the Defect. <clears throat> who starts with 75 max HP, 99 gold, and the Relic Cracked Core at the start of combat, Channel 1 Lightning. This character works primarily, well, I'd say primarily, but has a new mechanic in the ability to summon orbs that will have passive effects over the course of the turn, uh, at the end of your turn typically, although there are ways to trigger them at the start of your turn, and can be evoked using certain abilities in order to get more powerful initial impacts from them. Alright, so which of these do I want to take? The enemies in your next three combats have one HP would allow me to quite safely snipe this elite. That is to say, attack them when they only have one HP. I'll be taking that, but I actually figure that I am going to end up using it against these three normal camps and just kind of breezing through them, basically. Okay, so the base deck for this character has four strikes, four defends, a single zap, which channels lightning, upgrades to be zero cost, and dual cast, which evokes the rightmost orb, <clears throat> upgrades to be zero cost as well. Uh, so channel. Channeling an orb puts it in your first empty slot. If you have no empty slots, your first orb is automatically evoked to make room. And a lightning orb just deals damage to random enemies at the end of your turn. And evoke consumes your rightmost orb to use its evoke effect. Evoke is typically just a more powerful effect of what the passive effect would be at the end of the turn. Uh, so here I'm kind of interested in taking cold snap. It's just a strike that also gains one frost, and frost gives you block at the end of your turn. So here you can see we've got a lightning that does three damage at the end of the turn. A frost would give me two block at the end of a turn. Fusion Tempest Claw. Fusion has a plasma orb. This is a unique type of orb, a much more rare kind of orb, uh, that gives you energy at the start of each turn. Then you've got the Tempest, channel X lightning, and Claw. Deal 3 damage, increase the damage of all Claw cards by 2 this combat. <clears throat> so Claw can be part of a core strategy for the Defect. The Defect has a lot of ways to take advantage of having zero cost cards. Uh, to return them to their hand in particular. I do like having a Claw or two in a deck. You find yourself in a room filled with racks of test tubes, beakers, flasks, forceps, pinch clamps, stirring rods, tongs, goggles, funnels, pipettes... Pipettes? 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 Cylinders, condensers, and even a rare spiral tube of glass. Why do you know the name of all of these tools? It doesn't matter. We'll take a look around. Find some potions. Hell yeah! So we've got a fruit potion here, which just gives you 5 max HP. I believe it's the only potion that can be used outside of combat as well. Ooh, self-repair. The end of combat heals 7 HP. That is just real nice. <clears throat> And hell, even basically free on this first turn, because I had nothing else I could do. So I'll kill the backline here and only defend. We've got eight damage coming through, but that's okay. We're healing for a bunch at the end of the fight. Sweeping Beam, deal six damage to all enemies, draw one card. There's also Recursion, evoke your next orb, then channel it. Uh, upgrades to be zero cost and steam barrier which gives you block but decreases the block it gives you over the course of combat i'll taking sweeping beam here i always do like to have an aoe in the deck at least <clears throat> excuse me so upgrading a card to become zero cost rather than upgrading another card to have a higher effect is really 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 important early just because it allows me to play more cards in a turn in a standard turn at least so there I just take the 75 gold and take some damage as well. Regal Pillow, whenever you rest, heal an additional 15 HP. I'm going for an elite in just a couple spaces. Uh, the Merchant's Card Removal Service now always costs 50 gold. You know I love that. Hell yes. So the Lagavulin is asleep. Only when we actually deal damage to it will it wake up. However, it's got 8 block at the end of its turn every single turn because of Metallicize. So that gives me the ability to just pass a lot of turns while I set up for the Lagavulin. So I've used a Claw, I've used a 
Zap as well. And now they do wake up at the end of this turn, right? Because it's the third turn. So I may as well start attacking them. But this claw now deals five damage, right? Because I took my time in the opener there. So I'll dual cast there rather than keep the lightning. So dual cast evoked the frontmost lightning orb for eight damage twice. So that's 16 damage, right? And the lightning orb does three damage at the end of its turn. So in order for the passive effect of the lightning orb to be better, I would need to be in the combat for six or more turns after this, right? Because three by five is 15 and yet the evoke value is 16. So we need to be in combat for six more turns Otherwise, the dual cast is typically better, especially here in the earlier games. Mm. I was really hoping to get Zap there or another zero cost card. All right. So, Lagavulin has a order where they will attack you for 18, attack you for 18, and then debuff you by taking away one of your strength and one of your decks, and then repeating the same cycle. It can be real frustrating. Good kill, though. Bag of preparation at the start of combat, draw two additional cards, as well as a focus potion, gain two focus. Focus is a unique statistic to the defect. I guess you can get it on other characters through weird interactions, but it's mostly unique to the defect and the effect that it has is it increases the passive and evoke values of all of your different orbs by one so we'll see that in battle at some point Ooh. so we've got bias cognition gain four focus at the start of your turn lose one focus another sweeping beam and darkness this is a new orb type it is an orb that increases its damage every turn it doesn't do any damage until it's evoked and then it deals the stored damage to the enemy with the lowest HP. The upgrade to this is Channel 1 Dark and then trigger the passive ability of all your Dark Orbs. So I really, really, really like having a Dark Orb in the build. Helps you get through bosses and elites that you otherwise might not have. More than happy to take a boot sequence here just for some extra block. Okay. First. Okay, we'll go auto shield, boot sequence. Now we're relatively comfortable. Alright, good. Definitely didn't need to use all of those, but that's fine. When you have a full slot of potions, it's time to start considering using them maybe flippantly. Because you can't hold more than three. And you might loot one at the end of a battle. Ball Lightning versus Storm versus Stack. So Ball Lightning is the same as Cold Snap, but in a different direction in that it channels Lightning instead. Also does one more damage. Uh, then you've got Storm. Whenever you play a power card, channel one Lightning. Upgrades to become innate, meaning it stays in your opening hand. That can be really, really powerful when you just have a build that's full of powers. This is like your damage engine for those. And then Stack, gain block equal to the number of cards in your discard pile, increases by three on its upgrade. Not particularly exciting. Oh, wow. Okay. So this is an event that allows you to store a card in it and retrieve it later. I don't know about that. I don't want to take the Iron Wave. It's just gain five damage. Uh, gain five block, deal five damage. And I don't have anything I really want to store in there either. So I'll pass. Hmm. I'll use the focus potion here because this can actually be a pretty annoying fight. So as you can see, the lightning orb is now dealing five damage at the end of a turn rather than three. And the frost orb is giving us four block rather than two. That's because of the two focus that we got from the potion I used. By the way, if you're someone who's familiar with this series and has stuck around with it for a long while, I do apologize for the kind of over tutorialization of things here at the very start. Uh, it's much a courtesy for those who might be getting into the series but also i think kind of necessary at least in the short term we'll be back to glossing over all of these things quite soon runic to decahedron if your hp is full gain energy at the start of each turn that's actually quite good for us uh the primary reason it's quite good for us is because we have self-repair to heal us back up, so we can stay at full HP kind of constantly. 
especially if we have enough defense. Speaking of defense, we'll take a chill here. Channel one frost for each enemy in combat. There's also blizzard. Deal damage equal to two times the number of frost channel this combat to all enemies. And then auto shields. If you have no block, gain 11 block. Oh, this is the perfect time to pull a chill out of the deck. And unfortunately, we didn't manage to. Thinking double defend here rather than self-repair. Because if we get back to the self-repair, we can have a much better effect out of it. Really? We still couldn't get shill here? That's so lame. Chill is just a ridiculous amount of block for us. I mean, chill and sweeping beam both are exactly what we would be looking for this entire time. So there's Dark Orb. You can see it's increasing by 6 at the end of the turn, and it has 12 stored. So that's the white number and then the one directly below. I stalled out for another turn there just so that I could get myself repair to get extra HP. I'll take a single copy of Go for the Eyes. Deal 3 damage. If the enemy intends to attack, weaken it. And definitely, definitely upgrade that Darkness. So Darkness is primarily how I intend to kill bosses. Yep, that's just straight up 36 damage the enemy is going to do here. Not really too much I get to do about that. Really wish I had my weakness available to me on that turn. Okay, roll a darkness here. This orb at the very front is pretty much ready to pop off. Actually, you know what? I'll prop it off really early here. So we just get 30 damage out of it. Nice. <sighs> Dual cast it as well. Hell yes. Hopefully I get the darkness in the next hand. Oh, I do, of course, because I can draw for it. Thank heck. Otherwise, I don't know if we'd be killing this enemy in time to prevent them from lighting all of the six torches and using the giant attack again. Yeah, I'll hold here because now dual cast is lethal. There it is. Popped him. All right. Electrodynamics. Lightning now hits all enemies. Channel 2 lightning. Now, the big reason that we want to take a card like that, even though we have a, like, a ridiculous amount of other orbs already in the deck, is because the area of effect next floor is really, really important. It actually just becomes insane. Uh, so there's Sneko I here. Start each turn. Start each combat confused, rather. Draw two additional cards at the start of each turn. So, Confusion can only randomize the cost of a card between 0 and 3. But, don't think, oh, only if I have a deck full of 3 and 4 cost cards. Well, there are 4 cost cards in the game, by the way. Uh, only if I have a deck full of 3, 4, and 5 cost cards is Sneko I ever worth it. Otherwise, it's just unreliable. No, the fact that it draws 2 extra cards per turn is really important and can make it a ridiculous powerhouse card. Not in this deck. We have a zero cost card, another, 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 and dual cast becomes zero cost soon as well. And we don't necessarily need to draw that much. So other than that, there's the tiny house. Upon pick up, gain one potion. Obtain 50 gold. Get one card. Upgrade your max HP by five. And raise a random card to an upgraded status. I'm going to go with the astrolabe here. Upon pick up, transform three cards, then upgrade them. So that's effectively just removing three different cards from the deck and introducing three upgraded cards into the deck instead. Cool-headed, channel one frost, draw two cards. Okay. Scrape, deal nine damage, draw four cards. Discard all of them that do not cost zero. And then sweeping beam. A pre-upgraded one as well. Okay. Gives us a little bit more AoE. Pretty pleased with it. So we've been looking to keep our max HP as long as we possibly can here. Because it's giving us extra energy. The extra energy that we aren't getting from... Uh, beautiful. The extra energy that we aren't necessarily getting from the energy relic that we didn't get at the end of the first floor. I'm not mad about it. 
just just mostly. So now we're frail. It's going to make defending a lot harder for us. Mm-hmm. So if I scrape here, I could get zap. I could get claw. In fact, if I get claw, I've got the win. Hey, there we are. Beautiful. Fire in a bottle. If you would die, heal to 10% of your max HP instead and discard this potion as well as a pre-upgraded claw. More than happy to take that. There's also the charge battery actually here. Gain 10 block next turn, gain in energy. That's pretty good for helping to offset my energy deficit. I think I have to take that. Beautiful. So here you can see an example of an AoE fight where we would really want to have electrodynamics. And what? Huh. Fancy that. We've got electrodynamics. I'll use the scrape here, hoping to draw... Nice. <laughs> hoping to draw chill. Go for the eye is also would have been acceptable there as well, though. Hologram, charge battery, and steam barrier. Hologram is really good for being able to bring back a card. It is gain three block, put a card from your discard pile into your hand, upgrades to no longer be exhaust and give you five block instead. Using that to pull back a darkness or a claw or a sweeping beam even in a pinch can be really, really, really powerful. Okay. Naturally, you join the line and are quickly surrounded by cultists. They ignore you as they gleefully chant and wave their weapons around. Murder! 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 Cool! repeat. You, I, a donation box. We smash and grab in order to get 99 gold, or we can obtain the Ritual Dagger, which will knock the Runic to take a Hedron out at the moment. But the Ritual Dagger is a colorless card. It's an attack. Deal 15 damage. If this kills an enemy, permanently increase this card's damage by 3. We're getting this really early on the floor, so I'm actually kind of interested. Let's do it. I wouldn't typically, but it is just nice and exciting. and I'm kind of into it. Damn. Just discarded a lot of cards there that I really, really, really wish I hadn't. Okay, a hologram. What can you bring back that I want? We go for the eyes, basically. Alright, so hologram brings back go for the eyes. We use that to weaken the enemy just to prevent four damage there. Okay. Get an extra energy for next turn as well. So we've got the confusion effect currently applied, which is why. All of this is so dire. Okay, Ritual Dagger's still in the deck. Good. I didn't know that I'd left that in the deck, but I guess I'm glad. Because now I'll Electrodynamics and then kill with it. Hell yeah. Upgrade its damage by three. Boot Sequence. Innate. Gain 13 block. I really, really like that. It's free as well. That's going to give us some time as we try and set up the rest of our stuff. Far in excess to requirement here, but still. All right. I'll scrape here literally just to try and draw through the deck a little bit more. And I don't channel the lightning orb there because it's more important for me to have these frost orbs up, I feel. Okay. So it's sweeping beam now. Ooh, ritual dagger, you're a little bit early. And unfortunately, hologram is in the same hand, which means that I'm not going to be able to pull it back. All right. So we'll use hologram to pull back go for the eyes and just weaken the frontliner again. Excuse me. Influenza Rhapsody is right. Good lord. Alright. Uh, it's definitely cool-headed claw. Think of like electrodynamics. Zap. The reason I want this is because now I only have 7 HP missing and I've got the repair at the end of all of this. So I'm well positioned. I'm well positioned to have the Runic Dodecahedron active in my next combat. Mm. 
Unfortunate, but I gotta do it. So we can do the gain, I guess. I want that Mystic on low HP so that as soon as I draw my Ritual Dagger, I can just kill. Okay. Enemies on extremely low HP, and here's the Ritual Dagger. Popped him. Good. Gambler's Brew, discard any number of cards and then draw that many. Do I want to take another Boot Sequence or another Claw? Probably neither. There's also Melter, which is remove all block from an enemy and then deal 10 damage. It can be okay. Electrodynamics and Ritual Dagger both need to be upgraded relatively soon, but AoE fights like this, specifically in Elite Rooms, are why I'm holding on to upgrading the Electrodynamics instead. Ooh, gosh. All right, I'm going to hologram back charge battery because the extra energy that it's going to cost me next turn to use the electrodynamics, hopefully next turn at least, uh, is going to be pretty significant. Yeah, so we electrodynamics. Then we'll chill to evoke all of the electrodynamics. Beautiful, as well as get a bunch of block. So the incoming damage is 14. We're defended currently for... Only 11. That's okay right now. Good. So now all I have to do is really wait until I have a Ritual Dagger activation. And then I am more than okay with all of this. Yeah, I don't want to play that. No, actually, I do want to play that. That's fine. So prepare to defend. Hell yeah. Come on, Ritual Dagger. Not always, but sometimes it's okay to stall out fights and things like that. War paint upon pickup, upgrade to random skills. Do actually quite like that. A beam cell that would come pre-upgraded. We have too few attacks in the deck to really take advantage of that. We've got like half attacks, half orbs is the deck. Dual cast got upgraded. Really glad to see that. That's actually a priority upgrade for me. Uh, the library, you come across an ornate building which appears abandoned. A plaque that is torn free from the wall is on the floor. It reads... The library. Inside you find countless rows of scrolls, manuscripts, and books. Pick one and cozy yourself into a chair for quite some time. Uh, so if we sleep, we can get HP, but we can read and we can see 20 different cards that we might want to add to the deck. There's a lot of appeal to just taking another hologram here or a chill. Yeah, we'll take another chill. It feels like a lot of the time it is providing just enough defense for me. Gremlin Horn, whenever an enemy dies, gain an energy and draw a card. Really, really, really great pickup there. As much as I want to go for another upgrade and then hug this path, there is a shop on this one and I really need a shop. I've got way too much money. Okay, Augmenter, a man with an eye patch and a devilish grin strides up to you. Hey there, stranger. Interested in advancing science? I can make you stronger than any training or blessing. You're going to need it if you want one of those heroes with a dash wish. What do you say? Uh, so you can get Jax, which puts a card in your deck that loses HP but gains strength. Upgrades to gain three strength instead of two. Uh, become a test subject, which allows you to transform two random cards. Not random cards. It used to be random cards, but two cards in your deck. Or you can ingest mutagens, which gives you a relic mutagenic strength. At the start of combat, gain three strength. At the end of the first turn, lose three strength. Marvelous. You quaff the mysterious substance. Immediately, you are invigorated and feel your muscle fibers twitch. Oh, and I'm just looking for more attack. Damn it. Really would have liked to kill with a ritual dagger there on turn one, but now I have to wait for ages. This enemy has an effect called Malleable, which means every single time I deal attack damage to them, they gain block, and the block that they gain increases over the course of the turn. Come on, just defense. Hey, never mind, got the Ritual Dagger. Hell yes. 
Uh, da -da -da, bunch of stuff I don't really want. Reprogram is look at the top four cards of your draw pile. You may discard any of them. It's synergistic for a build I'm not currently running. Ooh, this is perfect. Do I have another claw in the deck right now? I don't. Cool. So it's go for the eyes, hologram it back, and then go for the eyes. This enemy is the Book of Stabbing. Uh, whenever we receive attack damage from them, they put a wound into our discard pile, which can be actually kind of tragic. So weakening the enemy is really, really powerful. I'll choose not to use Boot Sequence there because it does exhaust and I don't need it that turn. I was already fully blocked. Speaking of already fully blocked, we're already fully blocked. Okay. Ooh. I do think we need a damage engine out there. Like, playing Electrodynamics here is a little bit much, though. No, it's not. It's fine. <sighs> Taking no damage. Okay, so what? We've got 24 damage incoming. This could be pretty bad. All right, we'll sweeping beam yet again. Hmm. Definitely scrape here as well. Okay, boot sequence. Great pickup. The big problem I have is we can get another 16 damage in, but then the ritual dagger isn't yet lethal. I really want the ritual dagger lethal. Okay, so I'll darkness and then dual cast here. That'll get the enemy down significantly in terms of HP. And sets me up with the ability to kill them with my next evoke. Couldn't give me ritual dagger there? Damn it. Vajra, Stardish Combat with one strength. Do quite like that. Another copy of Electrodynamics. Sure. AoE is really, really, really important, so... For that same reason, we'll be taking the Explosive Potion there, which is 10 damage AoE. Uh, okay. The Mausoleum. Venturing through a series of tombs, you're faced with a large sarcophagus studded with gems in the center of a circular room. You cannot make out the writing on the coffin. However, you do notice black fog seeping from the signs. So we can get a Relic here, but it will give a 50% chance of getting the Curse Writhe, which is unplayable and innate, so it just takes up space in your opening hand. Space in our opening hand isn't so important because we have two extra cards drawn in the opening turn because of the back preparation. But also, we have a shop in one space, so I can remove the curse if I get it. We didn't get it, though. Potion belt. Upon pickup, gain two potion slots. Not bad. Oh, hell yes. So we've got a defragment here, which is just straight up gain one focus. Upgrades to gain two focus, as well as another darkness. I am more than happy to take each of those. There's also a bottled lightning. Upon pickup, choose a skill. Start each combo with that in your opening hand. I'll do that to the pre-upgraded darkness. So now we have some serious stuff going on with this dark build. Then I'll remove another card from the deck and probably pass the rest. Yeah, nothing else here really excites me. We need to upgrade both Defragment and Darkness as soon as possible. I'm going to go for the Defragment first. Oh, hell. Oh, my gosh. That is an opening turn. Oh, those Dark Orbs are going to get so buffed. Okay, so we chill here, which actually kills one of the targets, which I actually wasn't intended to do. Um, hmm. I'll hologram back the sweeping beam. Sure, chill again. That's full defense now. That killed an enemy. Good enough for me. I mean, the majority of this fight is usually just trying to take out those chumps, and we took them all out real quick. Okay, so we do want to get to our next electrodynamics as soon as possible so that we can take out the AoE effects here. But also, it's not like there's a ridiculous rush. So the Collector now hits giant debuff on us. Three of all different types. That is to say vulnerability, frailty, and weakness. Uh, definitely a Electrodynamics here. 
Oh, hell yes. That's pretty reasonable defense against the Collector doing a giant attack against a vulnerable target. That said, I do need to get another Darkness Orb up. It's really important. Come on, don't discard a Darkness. No, we didn't. In fact, we got two of our Zero Cost cards there. Nice. So I wouldn't have put Scrape in this deck, but since Scrape was already in this deck, I kind of just have to work with it. Okay, that'll murder one of them. That'll murder the other one. And then we'll full defend. Another 21 damage coming in. How dare you? Good thing we hadn't used boot sequence earlier. Otherwise, we would have had a lot more difficulty defending that this turn. Full headed. An easy dual cast right there. Got him. Damn easy boss fight, if you ask me. So we've got Bias Cognition versus Fission. Remove all of your orbs, gain energy, and draw one card for each orb removed. Upgrades to be Evoke, and evokes them. Uh, the buffer, prevent the first time you would lose HP, or the next time you lose HP, the upgrade being the next two times you would lose HP. Um, I mean, Fission's pretty damn good. Ooh. Empty Cage upon pick up, remove two cards from your deck versus the Calling Bell upon pick up, obtain three curses and three relics. This is almost never worth it. Uh, and then the Nuclear Battery. At the start of combat, channel one Plasma. So that Plasma gives us a energy at the start of each turn. That's going to be particularly good for helping us set up. It's kind of like a faux energy relic because as soon as that Plasma is evoked, we no longer have it. Okay, this path has two late shops, which I really like. The ability to dodge between them as well. We'll also go for an early shop so we can be super picky. Okay, darkness, then the other darkness. Oh my gosh. Yeah, alright. I'll chill. That straight up kills the target there. Pretty ridiculous opening turn right there. Oh yes, Defragment and Electrodynamics is extremely obviously the play there. Get that AoE going on. So the middle is already dead. Backliner is dead now as well. Managed to even use my Ritual Dagger. Swift Potion for draw three, as well as a bunch of cards I don't want. FTL, deal five damage. If you've played less than three cards this turn, draw one card. Uh, because we have draw cards like the Sweeping Beam and the Hologram in the deck, we don't necessarily want FTL. We've also got the Cool Headed as well. Giant consideration there. Another Defragment and another Darkness. Do I do it? Yes. The answer. I can tell you I'm going to do it because then I did it. This is definitely Electrodynamics, and then just trying to evoke a bunch of orbs. Come on. Do I fish in here? Sure, I might get my other Electrodynamics. Or not, that's fine too. Ah, just murder a bunch of targets for free. Don't mind if I do. Alright, Spiker. Thank you for sticking around while I wait for my Ritual Dagger. Another, another Swift Potion. Hell yes. As well as a bunch of cards I'm not going to take there. Fight for a Rare Relic. Yeah, okay. I'll do it. That Fission needs to be upgraded as soon as possible. It's like actually really important. So we'll do that. Then Hologram it back. Then do Darkness again. Alright, so there's almost full block for the first turn.
Yeah, I can't use vision there. Beautiful Electrodynamics is going to be the kill on one of them easily. So yes, I'll be taking a little bit of extra damage this turn as well. There's the Ritual Dagger though. Kill him with the Ritual Dagger, hell yes. Pocket Watch, if you play three or less cards during your turn, draw three additional cards at the start of the next turn. As well as a bunch of cards I'm still not going to be taking. This is the Transient. The Transient dies in five turns, so it's a weird kind of battle where all you have to do is deal damage to them in order to defend. They have Shifting. Upon losing HP, they will lose that much strength until the end of the turn. So my job here is to just always have a Dark Orb ready to pop because that will really help us against the Transient. Okay. Summon a Darkness, then bring back the other Darkness. Really would have liked to have that Defragment out. That's okay, though. See how this is all working out? I will take the charged battery here as well. Just have extra energy for this turn. So we're never going to be using Ritual Dagger for the kill against this enemy. So best position to be able to use it in there. All right. I might need to do extra draw this turn or something like that just to get ahead because this could get really, really, really nutty if I don't get to pop off any of these orbs. Okay, I'll use that so that I'm actually fully defended this turn because now with the 7 healing at the end of the turn we're back on the runic dodecahedron train. Ancient potion, gain 1 artifact as well. Hey! Reinforced body. It's an X cost card. Gain 9 block X times. Do love that. So I'll be running over here to get one of our upgrades because we have so many different cards in the deck we still need to upgrade. Obviously, Fission being one. So this enemy changes its intent every time it receives attack damage, so you don't want to only attack it very few times in a turn. Otherwise, you'll oftentimes leave yourself unprepared for the intents it changes to. Or the intents to which it changes. Um, happily go for the charge battery at the start of this turn. Hell, I'll even scrape. Okay. Not half bad. I won't attack again here because then I could change their intent to be really bad. They have an intent that literally just adds a copy of... Uh, what is it again? Damn it, have I forgotten it? I also need an attack this turn because the enemy is doing a ridiculously huge attack. Oh gosh. Please give me an attack. Hey, there we go. That's beautiful. Uh, it has the ability to just put a curse in your deck. I believe that actually makes it the only combat that can do that. At least in the base game. Alright, so... Probably Electrodynamics, then Cool-Headed. Dual cost happily as well. Could I even kill here? Like, that'd be it. Explosive Potion, deal 10 to all enemies. Ooh, a pre-upgraded Chaos, channeled to random orbs, but there's also a pre-upgraded Reinforced Body here. Do I need Defense more, or do I need the channel of random orbs more? Channeling two random orbs is pretty damn good. Occasionally, you get a Plasma Orb. That's just extra energy. Get the Defragment upgraded. Now, both of those Darknesses need to be upgraded as well. Ornamental Fan, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. We'll upgrade one of the darknesses now. That hologram also needs to be upgraded as well. Oh, good thing we have a line with so many different upgrades on it. So now with the upgraded fission, we can actually kind of happily do that. 
Oh, I lost both of my defragments on that. Damn. Let's actually just kill some of them here on the first turn. Beautiful. That'll do as well. Oh, pardon the sudden silences. I'm <laughs> just blowing my nose off camera. The worst time for me to get a flu, the absolute worst time that it is possible for me to get a flu is when extra content comes out for Enter the Gungeon. Enter the Gungeon? Nope, Enter the Gungeon. Slay the Spire, I mean. Just thinking about Enter the Gungeon because I was just recording that with Rito. Um, yeah, really bad time for this to happen to me. Extremely lame. Not a fan. If I just used Cool Hitter there, I would have had to kill. Oh well, let's say I was just waiting for the Ritual Dagger. That's not actually what was happening there, but let's say. Okay, all of the darknesses are upgraded now. Our final boss is the Time Eater. The Time Eater has a unique gimmick wherein... Ooh, hang on, do I care about any of these? No, I'll take the Focus Potion and remove a card from the deck happily. That's about it though. There's nowhere to spend my money after this, so I may as well just take another card. We'll talk about the time you didn't get there. Before there, the Reptomancer. Hello, Reptomancer. Ooh. Look at all that block. So I'm trying desperately to make sure that go. That I get my darkness at the very back of the entire party. You can see how much you can accomplish on that one turn with the extra pump of the extra draw that you can get. Uh, electrodynamics versus another darkness. Probably electrodynamics first. And then we'll darkness, kill an enemy with it, draw a card. Let's bring back, I don't know, darkness? Mm. Okay, we'll just cycle through all of these orbs quite quickly then. It's only fair, it is a bunch of damage. <clears throat> so this enemy just summons a bunch of daggers. They do reasonable damage on turn one, but on turn two, they do lethal damage. So very important to kill them as quickly as possible. They also blow themselves up on turn two though. Bottle Tornado. Upon pick up, choose a power card. Start each card with that combat. Uh, start each combat rather with that card in your opening hand. Electrodynamics would be good if I had any more AOE fights left, but I don't. I just have the time eater, so I want to fragment. And then here we can upgrade another card. Let's probably go for the eyes. Get the extra weaken out. So in the boss fight here, I'm going to do a little bit of a sneaky sneaky. That's the speed potion is gain five decks. At the end of your turn, lose five decks. The artifact negates your next debuff. So if I use the ancient potion, then the speed potion, it will negate the debuff of lose five decks at the end of your turn. And as a result, I just have five extra decks. Ridiculous. The focus potion, by the way, doesn't affect plasma, just in case you're unaware. So now it's definitely Defragment, Darkness, Hologram back the Darkness, Play the Darkness, Boot Sequence. Oh, we're almost fully defended. So the Time Eater has Time Warp. Whenever you play 12 cards, it will end our turn and gain two strength. It's worth noting those 12 cards across as many turns as you'd like. So you always want to make sure that you leave yourself with the ability to play a couple of cards next turn. Otherwise, you can be in a bad position. So here I've left myself with the ability to play four cards next turn. Am I likely to play four cards next turn? Probably. Um, I've also only played three cards this turn, which means that the pocket watch will draw me extra cards. So unfortunately, I can't use Fission here for obvious reasons. I would just take a bunch of damage. Okay, I'll chill twice. And unfortunately, will still take damage. The enemy also has gained two strength because I triggered Time Warp. 
Definitely Defragment, Darkness. Do I even need to defend here? No, I don't. Beautiful. I can play the Self Repair. Playing the Self Repair would literally only serve to get it out of my deck so that I don't draw it again. Because when a power card is played, it does not shuffle back into your discard pile. Okay, not bad. It's cool headed. All right, so I'm going to go off this turn. So I hope to be able to play five more cards. That's actually going to be rough. No, it's fine. We've got it. There we go. Five more cards. Okay, so the enemy is now below half HP, which means they're going to use the effect where they will just buff themselves up ridiculously. Frost Orb out there as well. Beautiful. So they heal back up to half HP. And also they completely purge themselves. So they remove all debuffs. So at this point, I could just play three Darknesses in a row. And that would be a bunch of damage. Yeah, I'll just do that. Next time I draw a dual cast or anything like that, it's lethal easily. Oh, never mind. We'll just use electrodynamics to pop all of those off. And then what? Sweeping beam. Go for the eyes. And hell will even claw to finish it off. That's the time eater down. And defects victory on its first playthrough. 752. Not a particularly ridiculous score right there. But we do manage to unlock our first level of unlocks which is the Rebound Equilibrium and Echo Form. Rebound putting the next card that you play atop your draw pile. Equilibrium being Retain Your Hand this turn, uh, as well as 13 block for a two-cost skill. And Echo Form, Ethereal, which means if it's in your hand at the end of your turn, it's exhausted. Uh, and the first card you play each turn is played twice. It is pretty ridiculous and leads to some of the most broken builds that you can have in the defect. For the moment, though, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slayer Spire. We have got all of the three different keys available so far. So we can start fighting the heart. Hell yes. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.